Hey, what's happening, Tamers? It's your homie S. Dot coming back to you with another video. Today's video is going to be another BTA match featuring Black War Gray again on the left, and we have Mastermind here on the right. So, uh, to start off, my opponent is going to Digivolve into the uh, Agumon that gives any Greymon uh, plus 2k on, only on their turn. And then he's going to play the Black Agumon. It's a new card out of BTA that's going to allow him to reveal the top four cards of his deck, add one Digimon with Dragonkin in his type, and then one Digimon with Greymon in his name. So, it looks like he does have a Dragonkin in the. Um, yep, the black or gray. He'll call he counts as both technically so he counts as dragonkin and the Greymon. and then he's gonna get the uh, He has an option between the Alterius mode metal Greymon, and then also the new Greymon that gives blocker as long as you have a red Digimon in play and He's gonna take that uh, which is very strong. So that's a uh, one of the best opening turn I want to say one of the yeah, that's a, that's a very strong opening turn You really can't only thing he needs here now is a level five So that'll be really strong for him I'm gonna start my turn by hatching Nearomon. Nearomon is gonna digivolve into Salomon and then I'm gonna digivolve looks like into Black Gatomon and uh go to zero and then it was going to digivolve it all the way up into a lady devi uh, of course i really didn't like digivolving lady devi like that in the back um in hindsight i guess i potentially could have just passed and gave him three since i was giving him three anyway so on my following turn i could digivolve into the lady devi uh and get the draw to you know discard to but he also is playing black or gray so he could easily you know if i give him enough memory he could potentially go into a uh metal gray mon and just de digivolve my uh you know lady devi which is something i definitely don't want so So we're gonna digivolve into Greymon to give security attack plus one in the back and then digivolve to the new Greymon in the uh, battle area. And that's gonna give me one memory. So that's a very efficient way to use. Uh, this deck plays a lot of champions too. And uh, because you play Chimeramon, like there's a potential that next turn he can like raise the Greymon and go into a Chimeramon. It's not that strong here, especially because when he digivolves into it, he'll do, <clears throat> excuse me, minus 3K on my Tapir, which is like whatever, cause I'm just gonna just replace itself by drawing a card. Um, he could digivolve here into an ultimate though over his Greymon, and then that uh, this allows me to want to attack with the tape here because he'll just block with the Greymon. But then I also do have the uh, the um, Lady Devi too. But anyway, he didn't do that anyway. He plays a Marcus, uh, which is really good here. So just setting up for some future turns. Uh, no reason not to attack here. Yep. So attack with the tape here. Tape is going to hit into a the Black Metal Greymon promo. Going to be deleted. Draw a card. I move so fast on myself. I draw a card. If I didn't, I'm cheating myself. Nice going. I clearly don't have or don't feel like it's uh, time for me. Well, I don't have a loose mind in the trash. That's another reason why Digivolve and the Lady uh, Devi in the back wasn't as good because you don't get to set up your uh, trash with, you know, a level five or whatever to bring back with Mastermind to be able to put in your security. Granted, you could play any level five or lower Digimon from your security with a Mastermind, but. So anyway, I'm gonna play a uh, Ghazi. I probably was better off passing, to be honest. Uh, maybe I'm kind of banking on that he doesn't have a level five here. But if he does have Chimeramon or um, any of them, literally Chimera, well, yeah, Chimeramon, Metal Gray, or the Red Metal Gray, the Black black and Red Metal Gray or the other Metal Gray, I'm definitely in trouble. But it looks like he doesn't have it. He's going to attack with Greymon. He's going to tap uh, the Marcus to gain a memory because he's attacking with the Greymon. Hit into a Tapir, super safe there. Going to play another Marcus. So that's telling me that he definitely does not have a level five currently. So there's no reason not to digivolve until a level five. Yeah, he's gonna play another rookie, so that's one less rookie he has to be able to recycle after raising the Greymon. So, um, if I detected that and I had the cards in my hand to be able to try to do some uh, type of push here, then I probably need to because uh, before he finally does draw until a level five, it's kind of unfortunate though. Like if I don't have a, you know, any mega, even if I have the Mastermind and I don't have a way to like, you know, play a level five ultimate and then jog rest at the end of the turn with the salamon inheritable i need to like this is like a really good turn probably attack that Greymon here so i don't want to get too far behind like i haven't hit a security oh, I, I lied i hit a security once so um yeah okay so i hit into the Greymon here definitely no reason not to or few there's few reasons not to i'm not gonna say no reason Thinking about attack with the Ghazi. Ghazi's not that good. If no, actually the Ghazi's nowhere near good at all. The card is literally not that good in this matchup. So um, not good at all, excuse me. So we're gonna trade there, put him down to three security. So that's solid. Black or gray doesn't do any type of recovery or anything. <coughs> Just mine. Um, so like you for a red deck. So we're not have to worry about that. I'm gonna play Magna. Okay, so I did have it all. Okay, so the Magna is gonna go uh, heal one back to five. 
I decided to put a tapir on my trash, or excuse me, from my trash on the top of my stack. Even if I played that tapir back out, I'd be fine with that, because even if he pops it with the black or gray or the metal gray, I'll literally just replace itself again and draw a card, so that's value. And plus, playing a tapir is, uh, I can also just kill his Agumon there, because it is a level three. So, Mastermind Effect, if you're not familiar with it, um, when you draw aggress, which I just did, you put your level, in, you know, your level fives, uh, your yellow and purple, uh, together to draw aggress in the Mastermind. When you do that, you uh, put any... Uh, yellow or purple Digimon from your trash on the um, into your security, excuse me. And then you got you can play a level five or lower purple or yellow Digimon from your trash without paying his memory cost. And then when you do all turns, it's also not once per turn. When you play a Digimon by a card effect, which Mastermon has his card effect, you can delete one of your opponent's Digimon that have a level equal to or lower than the Digimon you played. So I could de delete a level four or lower there. So if I were to play the tape here, I would obviously be able to delete a rookie. So got some solid value there. Now, once again, if he does not have the metal gray mon here, um, it's definitely not looking good for him because I'll be able to uh, press on. I think he only has three memory or three security left as well. So I'm not threatening lethal. I'm not threatening threatening lethal lethal. I cannot talk. I am not threatening lethal next turn. So <laughs> metal gray mon will be pretty good here. To anyone thinking, so he's playing hard playing a uh, Greymon there, so uh, very unfortunate. To anyone thinking that uh, he should have, uh, or not should have, uh, to thinking that, man, why are you posting another Black War Grey game if we're just going to see Black War Grey get body because it can't draw anything? Well, this whole set is uh, good, I will say that. So definitely be stay tuned for the entire set because uh, it's, it's pretty good overall. And again, I'm just showcasing different matchups on top of that either. So this is just one of the games I have recorded that's next up in being, um, you know, commentated over. So kind of is what it is. Black or Gray will have his day. Gonna hit a Nokia there. Nokia is pretty good. But Mastermon is 14k because the Magna Angemon has it inheritable that for every three of your sources that you have out, um, or every three security that you have, it gets plus one, uh, 1k. So if I had six, I would get plus 2k, but I only have five. So there's an instance of three. And then I'll have uh, 14k. So pretty safe on everything. Gonna swing Wizardmon in. Wizardmon's gonna uh, also live here too, which is uh, pretty good. Then I'm gonna Digivolve Mastermon into Defeat, one of the uh, cards that's very uh, tough for the Black or Gray deck to deal with, unless they have Omnimon as worth Defeat. So I'm gonna, I don't know what we're counting here. Um, now I'm surprised, I don't know why I did that. And that was a slight misplay. There was no reason, he was gonna go to three anyway, and he had like a, a Marcus to, well, I guess he was going to three because I Digivolved into the, uh, what you call it, the Zort, right? No, no, I take that back. I guess he would only been at that. Nah, that was really weird. I don't know why I did that. I should have just popped the Nokia. The Nokia was the outlier there where, you know, it was gives him value. So I don't, I don't think there was a reason to really pop the uh, Marcus. I don't know. Unless he did have Chimera. Maybe I was thinking about Chimera and then like he, no, because he still could play. He could still Digivolve into the, what you call it, for three tapping the Nokia. So yeah, it was 100% a misplay. I should have popped the uh, Nokia. But speaking of Chimera, he does have it. So that's, this is kind of interesting here. The only thing that's kind of unfortunate is uh, even if he puts the Zord Defeat down to 10, like he can't kill it because I'll just clap back and kill his uh, his Digimon. So he has no type of protection or anything like that. So shout out to BT9 with the inheritables that allow you to protect and stuff. So uh, when the Chimera Mon is Digivolved, you can put one of your Digimon uh, from its uh, your trash to the bottom of his edge, uh, Digivolution sources, and then you can minus 1k to your opponent's dig for all your opponent's Digimon for each color you have. So he has black, red, and white, uh, including the Chimera Mon. Chimera Mon is also considered a black and uh, considered all, all the colors. So he's a white, black, and red Digimon right now. And it's going to minus 3k on both my Digimon. And actually, with something important to note, Chimera Mon's effect lasts to the end of the opponent's turn. So when they when they pass turn, keep in mind they all still have that DP minus. What kind of sucks here too is like he could attack over the uh wizardmon but then i'm going to okay so he's gonna go to black or gray for zero rather tapping the nokia only cost three he's gonna swing into security um i'm not sure exactly how big he is but he can also tap marcus here looks like he's forget oh no okay yeah he didn't forget sounds good uh ofani so is he at more than 12 i'm assuming he is since he's not scooping his card up into the trash so okay um, maybe he has the, he has the Agumon, I guess. Yeah. Oh yeah. That's the Agumon since earlier in the game. Cause he never raised. So it's at 14 K. So pretty safe. The only thing that's unfortunate here is there's nothing he can do to, to stop the defeat from attacking his war gray. And unfortunately he can't even just crash. Like I literally just get rid of it. So, um, unless he has one security, I'm not going for game. I'm going to go for value here. So there's no reason not to attack the 
uh, the feet over the black or gray, literally. And it would be incorrect also to swing with the Salomon first, because if I swung Salomon and my Salomon died in security, keep in mind when a Digimon is deleted, all okay, he only had one security. Yeah, so it didn't matter. And then swing Salomon for game. If I would have swung the Salomon first, let's say he had two security and then I weren't able to, um, if, if the Salomon would have died. All turns, the Black War Gray is allowed to unsuspend when a Digimon is deleted once per turn. So then it would have been safe from the uh, Zword attacking. But it didn't matter here. He only had one security and we're going to move on to game two. All right, moving on to game two. Um, he actually decides to go first. Um, so I really think he should have went second, actually. Uh, there are a lot of decks, except for like maybe um, like Mastermon versus Imperial. I guess I potentially see you going first because you, if you draw the Gatomon or you can get the Gatomon in Raising, that'll be really good because if your opponent goes like, you know, Rookie, XV, and uh, then you play the Gatomon the following turn and then they just raise and they play Hammer Spark or whatever and then they play Stamon and then bottom deck your not your got him on with imperial that really sucks so in this situation um because that's not the case you know with his deck i think it was definitely better for him to go second because i'm probably going to give him a good bit of memory between three and five maybe two like if i have a rookie and a wizard mon i give him two minimum but between three for a memory boost four for a uh a tamer and then five for god Oman, i'm giving them between like i said three two i guess two and five memory in the first turn and he has more memory to work with but Anyway, rambling aside about that, uh, he's going to uh, digivolve into a Greymon in the back. I did play the Godomon speaking of and got two cards, looks like. Got a Mastum or a uh, Magna Angelmon and something else. So, sorry for talking so long about that last bit without actually doing commentary in the game. I gotta stop doing that. But I got a Digimon to the uh, Metal Greymon from EX1. That is the one where if you attack a player, you can delete one of your opponent's Digimon that uh, have 4K or less DP. And it's inheritable, gives piercing to the Digimon as long as it has Dragonkin or Cyborg in its type, I want to say. So I'm going to raise the Salamon here. Interesting. Uh, maybe I need to cycle here, I'm assuming. So I am going to attack. Niara is going to trigger. If I have a purple Digimon to play, which Gatomon is, I can draw and discard a card. So it's kind of like um, Lightning Jaws. Interesting. A more utility active form of drawing and discarding instead of Demi Mera having to wait till your Digimon gets deleted. So I'm actually going to swing with the Gatomon here. Uh, Gatomon is going to get super punished, and that's one of the best feeling Geo Grays you'll ever see in this format. Gatomon's going to run into Geo Gray at security, going to die, and then Geo Gray is going to delete a 4K or lower Digimon, which is the Salamon. So unfortunate, it is what it is, but looks like that's why I played the Gatomon with no problem because I uh, have another one. So I'm going to play another one, put him at two, and even if he has. Uh, well, I won't say even if he has black uh, Black war gray here, that's not good for me because he'll be at a digivolve for three choke me at one And he only has red sources, but red is all he needs to oh, no, he can actually do that, too I'm silly <laughs> That effect we were talking about earlier the metal gray metal gray is gonna attack and uh, he has two checks too Which is nice from the gray mon and delete a 4k or lower DP Digimon the metal gray so, uh, yeah, God was going to die there. Super unfortunate. So, the tempo is really in his favor right now, and I'm already at three security. I do have Akari, so at least he's not going to be able to choke me. But, um, yeah, things are looking really strong for uh, the black War Gray player in this game. Especially that Geo Gray. That Geo Gray was, like, insanely clutch. Like, you can't ask for a better spot than that. Speaking of Metal Gray, he did have it, so he's going to Digivolve for uh, three and a... Uh, Technically choked me at one at first, but then obviously at the beginning of my turn, I'll go to three for Kari. He hasn't moved the memory gauge on his side yet, but it's okay. We know we're at three. Gonna hatch a Niaro Digivolve into Tapir. See what else I got going on here, if any. We do know I have a Magna Angemon in hand, so Magna Angemon I could play to put him at four. And then when I recover, I could tap the Kari because the card was added to my stack in order to gain a memory. So Kari is a really cool card in here too, because anytime you recover anything, it technically makes whatever you did cost one less, obviously. So it's really nice. And of course, Ghazi or nothing can stop that. Gonna play Calling from Darkness. Uh, this card is so dumb that it works like this, but it does. Um, just play it for one, because I do have a purple source in the Tapir Mon and Raising. And uh, it says, delete when you're a Digimon, then, excuse me, period, then add two uh, purple Digimon from your uh, trash to your hand. So I'm just gonna add back two Gatos. Pretty good. Gato feels bad here, though, because I'm gonna play it and give him three. If, excuse me, if I play it and give him three, he's just going to literally, if he has Black War Gray, Digivolve for three, keep his turn, pop my uh, my Gato, and then I'm just in trouble. So instead of doing that, I'm going to play Purple Memory Boost. Purple Memory Boost is going to grab a Black Gato. I'm going to put a defeat to the bottom, and uh, I missed the other two because, again, I move so fast, and I can't pay attention to everything for whatever reason. Steph, stop moving so fast. Jeez. 
So he's gonna raise, um, and I'm only putting him at one, so I guess it was more cost efficient to do that. If he plays Black uh, War Grave there too, he can only, yeah, I think it, I, it was definitely better than playing a Gato. Because if I did play the Gato and give him three, he could have Black War Grade me and deleted my Kari and keep his turn and go to zero. And then since the Black Metal Grade, or the Metal Greymon rather, gives you, um, allows you to attack unsuspended Digimon, he would just attack my Gato unsuspend. Way too much value. So going to attack with the Metal Grey again for seven um, and get three checks there because of Lightning Joust and just swing for game. And because I was able to get going, he was able to capitalize on that. And we are pushing this to a game three. That was pretty quick, too. And we are pushing on the game three, like I mentioned earlier about going second. Um, oh, and another reason why Black War Grey wants to go second, it's kind of like with Jessmon. Uh, you almost always want to go second. Uh, you want that sixth card, simply put. And uh, But it doesn't really matter here. Actually, he has a really strong start like he did game one as well, which is really cool. So uh, he's going to Digivolve kind of almost the same as game one, except for he has a Nokia and I guess a different search of Agumon. So very good here. And it looks like he did get something. Um, I missed it, of course. Again, forgive me. You guys probably saw it. I didn't. I suck. Gonna hatch a Demi Miramon. Demi Miramon's going to. <laughs> I just gave off a tell right there. I was about to digivolve and then I put the card back in my hand. So that tells me, and you could tell just, you know, as a tip uh, for me that I have two rookies in here. Not that that actually means anything. Like that information doesn't do a ton for you, but it's like, oh, okay. Well, he got rookies, so definitely gotta worry about that. Anyway, uh, gonna digivolve into Wizardmon. Uh, Wizardmon, and then I'll play a Tapir there. Okay, so that checks out. Uh, well, I had double tapia though, so the fact that I put the card back in my hand tells me, again, I have a, probably a different rookie that's probably either a Salomon or a, uh, what's the other one, Gazimon, because, yeah, if I put the card back in my hand, clearly it had to be a different card than Tapiron, because both Tapirs are obviously the same card. Anyway, gonna digivolve into a Greymon, don't mind my tangents, I have squirrel moments where I go off to the side and, like, talk a little too long about things. <laughs> gonna attack with the Agumon, Agumon's gonna hit a Flame Hell Scythe, bro. That is the worst flame hell scythe I've ever seen. That feels really bad. A lot of times the first check is really good and it checks out and unfortunately it didn't have anything to bring back, but it is what it is. It's gonna play another uh, Agumon for three. It's gonna put me at three. It's gonna get a black uh, uh, black War Greymon there. So it's really good. If he does have a five this time, um, I could definitely be in trouble. So I need to get going and do something. Uh, with the way my field is staged right now, I don't really have a lot going on. So, I need like a okay. I was gonna say I need a Lady Devi here. Lady Devi, Lady uh, Devi Mon kind of puts things you know into my. I don't want to say favor, but uh, it gets me going. It gets me going. I'll say that. So I'm gonna draw for Digivolve, draw two, and discard two. Good old Graceful Charity. It's actually pretty tough to know what to discard in this deck. After you discard Lucimon Chaos Mode, it's not like clear cut what you should discard. As I discard a Mastermon, so I'm hoping at least that I probably have one or two in my hand. I've noticed I, I clogged that card a lot anyway. I'm actually thinking about cutting that card to three, especially because I'm uh I, I don't think I'm playing Calling. No, I am playing Calling. Uh, since I'm playing Call Calling from Darkness, I can play three Mastermon and it'd be okay because once one is in the trash, I can easily just play it, you know, back and. Uh, Lost my train of thought. Yeah, uh, get, excuse me, play the Call of Daughters and get back to Mastermind. So it's essentially like playing four. Anyway, gonna digital into a Fonny Fall Down mode here. This is one of the reasons why Wizardmon is good in the deck because Wizardmon acts as two colors for one to uh, trigger or to, excuse me, give, uh, what's the word? Um, give you access to be able to play your Flame Health Sites and your Chaos Degrade. And then it also allows your. Um, Ophanimon to heal and delete one of your opponent's Digimon level 4 or lower, which is really good. And speaking of, well, I won't say speaking of the de deleting, but he could have deleted if I had something to delete. But he's going to Digivolve into the Metal Gray there and de Digivolve my Ophani, which is so good there because now Ophani's not being deleted and I won't be able to obviously play a Digimon from my trash. Uh, if he Digivolves into Black Metal Gray, I could be in trouble next turn because I do not have a yellow source in order to access the. Uh, the chaos degrade so see if he has it here he already tapped nokia to reduce the cost of the metal grade by one so this black metal grade will cost four if he has it Ooh, he's gonna play dark gaia force interesting so it's gonna make me build from razor which isn't the worst against this deck i mean i can't do a ton with that memory uh and i guess it obviously depends on the makeup of my hand i might be able to do a good bit and uh, expend some cards out of my hand and get some value out of that seven memory it looks like he gave me so makes sense now why he took a while to uh do what he was doing but let's see what ends up happening Oh, that's what, okay, I was wondering what took me so long. I, so I drew a card and discarded Salomon for the Demi Marimon, and I'm going to draw Demi, or yeah, draw and hatch a Demi Marimon and Digivolve into a Salomon. I have seven memory. I don't know why I do that. I guess we all do that subconsciously. Like, 
if there's a six on one side and an eight on the other side, what's in the middle stuff? Obviously a seven. <laughs> I noticed so many people that like pick the dice up to look and see what it's at. But I guess you just get so into the game. Ooh, two health sides at the bottom. Well, health sides not that good against this matchup anyway. But uh, yeah, it's like, bro, obviously, yeah, I don't know. I, I don't even know what to call it. Anyway, I'm going to play Chaos Degrade and kind of pay him back for what he did. Uh, I'm going to give him six memory here, though. And um, he's going to put it to the, I'm going to put his Digimon to the bottom of his security stack and then trash the top. So Chaos Degrade and uh, Mega Death, I think, are the two cards that I mentioned earlier that are the cards that can get rid of just about anything in this game. Uh, Chaos Degrade, I take that back, is the only card in the game that gets rid of anything. There's nothing that protects from Chaos Degrade. Not Omnimon Blitz, not uh, Breath of the Gods, nothing. Nothing, uh, you know, or you mind. Uh, Dora Greymon, none of those things protect from that. So Chaos Degrade is a very powerful card. A lot of people don't like it because, like, especially in security, it technically just heals your opponent. But depending on where it gets hit, it's very clutch. Um, just getting rid of a big stack out of nowhere. And, of course, it's, uh, you know, field effect. You play it efficiently or you play it when, obviously, you need to. It, it's a pretty solid card. They stay the same security. But the thing is, when you put the card to the bottom, whether you hit it out of security or not, the thing is, ooh, that's a great Geo Gray. Man, Geo Gray is, like, super clutch, this, uh, this set. Put me at two there. Yeah, put me at two. That's very good. But yeah, when you put the card to the bottom of Chaos Degrade, you literally know exactly what it is. So like the second to last security is the one that you obviously have to worry about at that point. And if that second to last security isn't anything, again, you know what the card is so you can attack or wherever and attack for game. There are some times where I think I've also messed up, by the way, where you actually need to put the card on top because you want to get like a clean swing with like one of your 6Ks. Like you put a rookie on the bottom on the top and like you know it's just a rookie or whatever or something that has 5K or less and you want to swing with one of your 6Ks, for example, or something to that effect and uh, then get two more attacks because like sometimes you don't want to attack it to the unknown in certain situations but you also want to get the security down to kind of keep progression of the game you know because obviously you know for you to try to win so uh it's very specific and it's something that i think it'll take a lot of testing with the deck um, i think it, like imperial is a lot easier to pick up and play and though it has some very technical plays as well um you know mastermind i think is a lot more technical and skillful to play um and uh, yeah in order in, in terms of paying attention like also little things like when you start the game like with mastermind i've had I've had games where I hatch a purple egg, right? Then I Digivolve into Salamon like I just did. Then I have purple memory boost. And it's like literally the only other card I can play that's viable to give him, you know, three memory. Otherwise, I just pass. And then I'm like, oh, wow, I can't play this purple memory boost now because a lost Salamon is not a purple. So actually, if your opponent starts the game and gives you three, make sure you hatch your egg and then play the purple memory boost first. Get your card and then play the Digivolve the Salamon. So order operations are a little tricky when it comes to this two color stuff. So. <laughs> Digital into a Salamon and a Wizardmon in the back, and then I'm gonna play a Tapir, put him at two. I have a total of seven play costs on the field, so say, man, you know what? Imagine if Wargrade got rid of anything that was seven play costs. So like, I was, oh my goodness, that'd be sick. But of course, they knew that was too good. Getting rid of a three cost Tamer and a four cost Tamer would be too good, or a three cost Rookie and a four cost Tamer would be too good. So. Digression aside, uh, saying that he's only going to be able to delete one or the other, uh, which would be really good here. If he does, which it looks like he doesn't because he's not raising. If he had Black War Gray, he could tap the Nokia to make it three costs and uh, so, and kill Makari, and then that chokes me at one, which would be really good. Doesn't look like he has the Blocker Greymon here, though. Uh, he's going to attack Geo Gray into security, see what he hits. He hits a Salamon, lives. Once again, Geo Gray is the MVP this set, that's for sure. Geo Gray is looking really good. He's going to Digivolve into the Black Orc Ray and Raising, which is interesting. I guess he didn't want to get Chaos Degraded again, which I can respect. Because if I Chaos, a second Chaos Degrade, like, he loses so much momentum. And if he doesn't have another uh, Ultimate and Mega to build up again, then he could potentially be behind. So, definitely respect that. There's no reason why Tapir Mon should not be attacked to security here. I guess what I'm thinking about is if I'm going to raise the Wizard to get rid of that Geo Gray. Because otherwise, Geo Gray is going to get yet another security check. Unless I have a Flame Hell Scythe, if I have, if I can attack with the Tapir, get value out of that, whether it dies or not, I can then, um, I, okay, okay, so I am going to raise, that's interesting, that's some, some scary stuff, seeing that Black Orc Race literally sitting in the back, yep, so I'm going to attack, use Niaro to draw and discard a card, clearly I uh, hope I know what I'm doing by doing that play I just did, so we shall see, okay, decide to pitch a Chaos Degrade, which is, I'm going to assume I have another Chaos Degrade in my hand. And maybe I did that to kind of coerce him into uh, raising the Black War Gray. That's the only thing I could think of. Because this card in the Chaos Degrade, which is the literal card that gets rid of uh, Black War Graymon, 
Uh, not sure why I did that, but he is down to two security to my three. So the game is getting pretty tight right now. This is definitely a, such a solid set. Uh, win or lose, you know, here, uh, whether, you know, he wins or lose or I win or lose. Um, this definitely showcases uh, some of the powers of uh, both of these decks uh, in action. I got to, you got to see Jagress in the first game. Uh, Wargrave took a quick game two, and then, you know, Wargrave's doing his thing in game three. So we're both seeing our pieces um, to some extent out of this set. So definitely very solid. Uh... I'm thinking about Digivolving. I think so. I do have Salomon. I think what I'm thinking about is the fact that I can. I wonder what rookie he has in the back. If his war black war gray is only 12k, right? I can Digivolve into a purple level five, like a Lady Devi, which is literally the only one I have. A uh, Lady Devi. Use the effect and then hard play at Magna to heal and then jog rest at the end of the turn because I do have Salomon. So. Yes, I'm giving him six or seven memory. Uh, well, actually, it'll be minus one of that because Kari. So Kari will help alleviate that a little bit. And that's exactly what's going to happen here. Because if I do have what I'm getting at, is if I do have Lusamon, I can get rid of the, um, yeah, get rid of the uh, Nokia. And if his War Gray is only 12, he can attack Unsuspended Digimon, but he'll crash with my Lusamon. And he obviously can't attack uh, Mastermon because Mastermon's 13. So if that's the case, then I think that's definitely the play there. And yeah, this makes sense here to just play the Angelmon to give him even one less. Angelmon costs six versus Mastermon costs or uh, Angelmon costs in seven, so he's gonna go to six. I'm gonna put Lucemon on top because Lucemon's really uh, Lucemon's the only card again that makes Black Warrior crash. If I got Magna Angelmon, sure I can recover, but he'll uh, be able to attack over it, and I want both of my Digimon here. So, and plus this also threatens game next turn, so makes him have to do something. I don't know what I'm thinking about here. Steph, if you don't just get that loose mind, put it on top. May, uh, you know what? Okay. In hindsight, I think I saw the play and knew the play because the game was already over. But I, oh my God, don't get that Magna. <laughs> to be honest with you, I don't remember exactly what I did. I, I really don't. I think I probably got the loose mind. I think what I'm talking about now, I already know in fruition. But at the time, I was like, hmm, I wonder what I should do. And looking at yourself play sometimes is kind of something else. I can't believe, oh my God, I didn't get the loose mind. Wow, why did I do that? Unless again, the, unless he has a war the uh, uh, attack boost with his um, rookie, which I'm not sure. I can't tell. He's raising, and I still can't tell. No, he doesn't have the. Oh my goodness, I misplayed. All right, Mastermind players, there was no reason not to uh, lose him on there. I should have lose him. On. That was really dumb. Yeah, I misplayed hard. That was I was at, I wasn't like in danger of game. There was no reason why I shouldn't have just uh, got the uh, the chaos mode there. Sorry, I'm like choked in my words right now because I can't believe I made such an idiot play. But hey, you know what? This is valuable because now when I look, oh my god, and he has a dark guy for it. Get wrecked. That's so good. Now I lost everything. Yeah, I'm a clown because I at least there. See, lesson learned. I would have at least had the loose mind on the field still because dark guy force gets it rid of a Digimon that has 15. Uh, uh, play cost or less. Uh, car, excuse me, Digimon at equal 15 play cost or less. And obviously, you can only get rid of one or the other because Loose Mon's like 14 and then uh, Master Mon's like, what, 12, 13? Really unfortunate. So I have, okay, I was going to say, do I have a Chaos Degrade? Because remember, I discarded one earlier. I was like, shoot, do I have another one? Got to put the Black War Gray on the bottom and then trash the top here. Um, that's the only play I could do here without giving him a ton of memory. So. And I, again, I still should have at least had a loose amount on here. So a loose amount should have got a chip in and then I should have, you know, played the same chaos degrade. So super misplay on my part. The only thing that would have changed here is I would have been at one security. So I guess kind of dangerous, but it's not like his deck goes wide where I have to worry about lethal next turn. So, all right, I'll get off that play. I know I'm talking about a play that happened 15 turns ago, but can't help myself. Learning experience for both of us, for all, excuse me, for all of us. All those in attendance. Also, shout out to everybody if you've gotten this far, 28 minutes into it. Um, one thing I think about DPP channel and a lot of those other guys, their matches take no more than 10 minutes, like or maybe 15 at the max for a whole match. We are slow over here. A lot of it's because we don't know what the heck we're doing and we're trying to learn the stuff. But even when we're well into the format, a lot of these matches take so long. Um, yeah, it is what it is, though. I have uh, definitely tried to tune myself into playing a little faster. Uh, and, and you know what? I do. I guess I'm just being hard on myself. I do play pretty fast. And I think the reason why I do that is to help because of time. Because I think about times and playing, you know, competitive card games for, you know, almost, uh, yeah, 15 or so years now. 
I when I do tank on a turn or two, and I said this in the past, you probably heard me say this in the past. When I do tank on a turn or two, I don't feel bad about it because I went 30 seconds or less on the other turns, you know. So and that doesn't always happen exactly like that. Potato potato in that situation. But anyway, uh he's gonna play a Marcus. So he has a Marcus and Nokia setup, which is super ideal. I literally have nothing going for me but a hatched egg and a Kari. So not looking good for me right now. Not exactly sure how I'm gonna come out of this. I do have two security, so I'm not in danger of game next turn. This deck uh, I guess he could technically game me if he has exactly BT1 Wargreymon and then Blitz on me. He could potentially game me next turn. So we'll see how this goes. I'm going to play that broken card calling from darkness because you don't have to delete a Digimon. Uh, shout out to all my Yu-Gi-Oh players. Coming from Yu-Gi-Oh, it's just wild how you can... Uh, normally, you know, from Yu-Gi-Oh, you have to do one thing, then the other. If you don't do the one, then you can't do the other. But in this game, that doesn't matter. I'm going to get back a Lady Devi and a Tapiermon, which is really good there because that allowed me to get a rookie that I was clearly um, exhausted of and didn't have one. So. And I'm going to Digivolve into Gatomon and go to zero. So, okay. So, we're not out of it yet. Not out of it yet because now if I had, well, we know I have the Lady Devi. I take that back. Not if. I have the Lady Devi, so that's going to be really good and allow me to raise Digivolve for one and then potentially do another Mastermind play next turn. So he actually has a good bit to worry about. This game is so good. I, I love I love this game so far. Very strong. Going to play a Ghazi. Ghazi is going to put him at three. Um, I really should have just passed. I don't know why I did that again. I think that was really dumb because whether he has Black War Greymon or he attacks with that Metal Gray, my guys, he's literally going to die for no reason. The only reason why that would make sense is if I had a uh, Tapir because the Tapir, even if it dies, I get the net and draw a card. But Gazimon is so garbage in this in this form, in this uh, matchup. I literally should have just passed. He would have got the same three memory. Now I'm just losing the Gazi for no reason. So bad play number two that I caught anyway. If you saw other bad plays that I misplayed on, let me know below in the comments so I can learn from them. Win or learn is the motto. Win or learn. Gonna raise the war or the the war gray, the uh, metal gray. Gonna digivolve into black war gray. He's going to probably delete my Kari, which is gonna suck. No, he deleted the Gazi. Now see, that was also a misplay. I think there's no reason he should have popped my Kari. Because he's at zero now. If it, and honestly, nah, I guess you want to stay at zero and get a check in and try to. Well, he is at two security. Eh. I think I would have deleted the Kari. And honestly, I might have even passed turn. I might have not tapped the Nokia to just put me at one and then break, break down my. I don't know. I don't know. To be honest with you, I don't know. Maybe that was the right play. Ooh. Okay. Well, everything just changed. <laughs> into the worst card you can see. That is a crazy spot, bro. That's a wild spot right there for Zort Defeat to come out. Because now he has to have Blitz Omni here or his Black War Grade just gets bodied next turn. And even if he has Dark Gaia Force, that's fine. We trade. It's a, it's a two for one in my favor. So that is that's too good. That's, that's such a solid spot. I'm not threatening game now, but now I just take all that tempo away from him. And that was just a really clean spot. So... I'm liking the depiction of this game uh, or this, of this match rather. You know, if you are a fan of the Black War Gray deck, I think this deck isn't counted out of this format. It's definitely not tier one, but it's like tier 1.5, tier two ish that can still compete with the tier one decks. But uh, that was just a rough spot. If I didn't hit defeat right there, um, I don't even know how this game would have went. But now that I did, well, it's like almost safe to say it's over, to be honest, at this point. Because it's not a lot Black War, for this deck specifically, it's not a ton Black War Gray can do to come back in this situation. Uh, it's not like he has another uh, ultimate and raising to raise and like clap back again. And now I have Lady Devi, which is doing what she does, doing the Graceful Charity. Yep. Gonna discard Akari. The extra Akari is like not, if he got rid of the Ghazi and Akari is, oh, excuse me, got rid of the Akari and a Wizardmon. Those are whatever right now. And um, I can happily play a, yep, happily play. And now I'm also recovering. This is just too good here. And if I had the Loose Mon, the Loose Mon's going to get rid of the Marcus. Um, he has two of one and one of the other. So this is kind of like the situation from earlier where he had a Nokia and two Marcus and I should have got rid of the Nokia. Let's hope I do the play correctly this time. Um, I also don't have to get Loose Mon here, actually, now that I think about it. I can get something else. But Loose Mon's such a strong body. It's 12K. 
I'm gonna get it out. Um, I still have to shuffle my security. Also, keep in mind when you did involve it in Mastermind, you still recover one from your trash no matter what. So you can also like put like a Ofani Mon fall down mode up there. No, you can't bring it back out, but now it's 12k, which is a threshold your opponent has to make sure they think about. And it's not gonna be just on the top. It, you have to shuffle your security so they don't know where it's gonna be at security. So 12k is a potential, or even Mastermind. I'll take that back. You can also put a Mastermind in your in your security as well, and that's 13k they have to deal with. So yeah, you t like I said, you recover one no matter what, but you just don't bring out the level five or lower purple or yellow Digimon from your security so keep that in mind and yeah this is pretty much unfortunate here we got three bodies on the board he's gonna just play a gray mon and we kind of know what's gonna happen here at this point there's really no reason for me to do anything else there's nothing for me to do but to attack i'm gonna swing into the defeat first if i hit into a digimon that deletes it like an omnimon i don't care because i literally get rid of his gray mon we're fine with that but we're gonna hit into agumon and then this problem is literally unless it's a dark guy for us oh no what am i saying i'm sorry he has three security i thought he only had two my bad uh, we're still looking good here, though, either way. Speaking of Ofani Mon, Ofani Mon will be pretty good here, too, because now the L Loose Mon got value, and then I can just Digivolve over uh, the Ofani, over the Loose Mon, excuse me, into Ofani and get rid of the Gray Mon. Uh, it's pretty much over at this point. Uh, okay, sure, that works, too. We're going to play a Scythe. Uh, not sure about the attack with the Master Mon. Um, I guess just being extra safe because we pretty much know it's over. And I'm going to get back a... Angelwomon and uh, Angelwomon also facilitates like me being able to just jog rest normally instead of passing turn and jog resting with an inheritable like Gatamon or Salamon. So it's pretty good there. And yep, looks like he's scooping it up and we're just, yeah, that's going to be the game. So that was a very solid set though. Very unfortunate with that Zwart defeat hit, but we ended up getting there. So I hope you guys enjoyed that set. Uh, guys and girls enjoyed that set. That was a really cool set. Uh, yes, Black War took another L, unfortunately, but uh, I did get lucky as well with the uh, Zwart defeat. So it's always not going to happen in that um, you know spot like that. I do think Agumon Bond of Bravery is a good tech for this deck, or and or a uh, Omnimon X anybody. I don't know about Blitz Omni. Blitz Omni is good, but I don't think that is the most necessary. Uh, all those cards like Chaos Degraded Setter still get rid of it, but I think uh, Bond of Bravery might be a really strong tech to uh, consider, as obviously it's good against security control like decks. So um, I will be getting up out of here, but uh, be prepared to get another game, a dose of some more BT8 coming up here in a few days uh, as I get the commentary for that together. Again, I hope y'all enjoyed. I will have more Black War Gray, hopefully Black War Gay getting the dub. Uh, shout out to Mastermind for you know his first feature on the channel and getting that win. And I'm, like I said, I'm glad I was able to showcase some of the things for uh, both decks and um, how they operate. So I will be catching y'all in my next video. Now y'all know what it is. Subscribe to the channel. Subscribe to my Twitch as well. My Twitch, I should be streaming my um, Cardamagica Card Magica regionals uh, this Sunday coming. So make sure you definitely follow my Twitch channel. I want to kind of try to you know get more uh, networking with that. And I'm gonna head up out of here. Y'all know what it is. Y'all have a great day and a night. Whenever you're catching this video, this is only as dot and now peace. Warrior.